your real life and real future, Tom and Don are talking real money. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Talking Real Money, the podcast, the video cast, a.k.a. the combo cast. I, I am Don McDonald. That is Tom Cock. We are two escapees from the land of unfortunate names, and we're here to help you out. I thought for now when you're going to you be You know the land of misfit as, toys? Yeah, exactly. I thought for now when you're going to be introducing me as your assistant, my assistant. Yeah, my, Tom my Cox, assistant, so. Thomas Seacock. Uh, Everybody's got to have a job. Call so, him, we yeah. used to call him a valet, but uh, I couldn't keep up the British accent, so we just went <laughs> exactly. to assistant. Well, it doesn't work. Thank you. Definitely Thank you not for Girl Friday, show, as they used Sir to say McDonald. back in the old exactly. xenophobic days. Way, way, way old. All right, are we ready to do a show now? We've I'm started ready to it. Do we it. better got, do it. This is going to be a really good show. So, actually, I've got a really good topic. Really? It's good. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Off, often the, co- the topics in which you are most confident. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay, well, give me a All try. Right. So, just here's, let me here's know. the topic. Yeah. Okay. All right, here is, ladies and gentlemen, Thomas yeah. Seacock, my yeah. esteemed valet and assistant, will now <laughs> share with you the topic O oh, the podcast. The topic, oh, the podcast is the topic that really at the end, there's two reasons people call us. They call us, I just came into $150,000, what do I do? That's always number one. And I tell you, number two always is housing related, real estate. Should I invest in real estate? Should I sell all? It's always something around that. They always want to know. And the answer always is, (laughs) it depends. There never is an answer, right? Because Don and I have, have agreed and I think he's right on this one, that real estate should be a like lifestyle situation, not an investment situation for the most part. There's some people that have bought things, they've owned them for a long time, especially commercial real estate, and they it, it is an investing side to that. But for the most part, if you're looking at a home, homes, whatever it is, it should be about what you want your life to look like, not about getting rich from real estate. Because while in the last couple of years, it feels like you're gonna make you rich, over the long haul, not so much. Well, here's the dilemma with even even in this environment. I mean, I've seen in my house, in which I've been for like 25 years, I've seen it go from three hundred and sixty thousand dollars up to a million, back down to about five hundred, then gradually it increased a little bit until like a year ago it went and did something crazy. It went up to over a million dollars again. Yeah, it has been nuts. But, so we're going to talk. But yeah, here's the dilemma, though. Yep. Here's the dilemma. I got a million dollar house, but where do I go from here? Yeah, you got to live somewhere. Well, you got and, Disneyland. And now dumpy you can go little live houses in the or castle or something there, right? No, they Disney, they Disney World. Pardon. They they are really adept at kicking people out of there. <laughs> Get you out of. Okay, two they parts of all this. Two reasons I want to talk about it. Number one is the Federal Reserve has actually issued a warning about the housing market, and this is their quote, showing signs of being in a bubble. Federal Reserve actually said that. Number two is I had a recent case where a gentleman came in. He had a bunch of money from a house he sold. He's been sitting on it for a while, and then he went out and wanted to go buy another house. He's in his late 60s, and I said, I don't think that's a good idea, but let's take. Well, but why wasn't it? Why, but but, but it did more, why wasn't it a good I'm, idea? I'm One, it. He I'm, didn't have I'm enough not money. Buying a okay. house. He wanted to go buy another house. Okay. I said it's not a good idea. Okay. We'll talk about. All yeah, right. you're right. It's not enough, but we'll talk about the other reasons why. But let's first take up the Federal Reserve's assertion and the reason that they see maybe a bubble. Number one, they talk about, and I didn't realize it gotten this high. The 30 year fixed uh, mortgage now, 4.2 almost 7%, 4.67%, which you and I know because we refinanced a year and a half ago, two years ago. Mine's mm-hmm. at like 2.4. I mean, that's a pretty yeah, dramatic, two, and that mine's a 15 year, so it's... six or something. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a pretty dramatic increase. Um, that's one. Number two, and this is going to sound, to people on the coasts, you're going to laugh, but the median price now is at an all-time record, which the median price at home in the United States of America, now 405000 Now, I know you're going to giggle if you're in Seattle. I want that house. Four th- I know. Where is that? Where it's, well, Where's that you know, house? Not in my fly town. Over U- fly over USA, right? Uh, their third reason is more and more people are using adjustable rate mortgages. The demand for those up 
percent from a year earlier because people can't afford to get into a 30 year. They need to have the adjustment. So they're saying, and this is their quote again, there are signs of being at a tipping point, a tipping point. Uh, first of all, they look at exuberance like didn't they use that around the stock market once in the late nineties or reaching the point? Anyway, irrational exuberance. Exactly. Uh, thank you. Uh, they yes. say that ninety-five percent is normal, and currently the exuberance ratio is at one hundred and fifteen percent, so way higher. Of course, the home price to income ratio is very high. Now, the good news, the good news out of all this is they did say they do not see a similarity to two thousand six, two thousand seven, which led to the meltdown in 2008 of course uh that that household balance sheets are better of course income verification now required on loans where in there was all the liar loans to get pretty much anybody the money back in that 2005 2006 situation but if you're worried about the housing market there's a good reason to worry i don't worry about it because as don said we're kind of in our homes and we're not thinking about you know cashing out and getting rich which brings me to yeah, the i am real life example well you're always thinking about that at some level um okay. normally with your bitcoin but in this case there your circumstance has more to do with your longer term needs than it does with real estate let me explain so a gentleman came in not long ago as i said sold a house a couple of years ago and then was thinking he'd kind of wait to see what happened with the market well that was a mistake because the amount of money he has now there's no way he wanted to go buy a home with cash he has about three hundred thousand dollars there is no home, uh, frankly, maybe an entire Western Washington you could buy for three hundred thousand. I don't know where that would be, but Central Washington, was, maybe Central Washington, yeah, perhaps. Yeah, you get over into it's a long, Wenatchee, long Yakima, maybe something like that. But even then, it's going to be hard. But here's the thing. Here's the deal. Okay, he is in his late sixties. He has no other savings, and he was insisting, mm. "I got to go buy a house." And I said, "No, you don't got to go buy a house." You're going to need to stay liquid. This is something people forget about. They they get in their heads. I think there's a lot of us in America think I have to own a home. He wants to do stuff outside in his yard. He wants to have all that. I said, you could do that with a rental hot property. You could find the right circumstance that fits your uh, your lifestyle, that fits your uh, finances. And I was recommending, no, you take that money. In, didn't, I don't say invested because if he changed his mind in three years, that was the other part is he wanted to know sort of short term. Can I invest this and have it grow to the place to buy a house? I said, absolutely not. No, there would be no way if you needed that money in under five years, there's no way you should be investing, investing that in stocks to try to hope it, it goes up. That would be crazy. So again, this is something that you brought up, Don, previously is that we have this mental state of mind that I need to own a home. And by the way, many people think I need to have it paid off when I retire, which I think is mistaken too, because they have a tendency to take liquid assets, stocks, bonds, cash, and pay off a mortgage with, they don't need to, even at 4%, that's a low interest rate. So again, if I was a seller, sure, there's a good time. But as you point out, got to have a place to move to. If I'm a buyer, I'm always cautious. Number three, if I'm a buyer and I'm in my late 60s, it's, you really got to make sure that your cash position, your liquid position is going to be there for the balance of your retirement. That's the part I think people forget about. I think part of the reason, and there are several reasons why people are obsessed with owning houses. One is it springs from our parents and their parents and before them, you know, a lot of people didn't own property, and it was the American dream to own property. Uh, the other is they want fixed costs, not realizing <laughs> owning a home is not a fixed no. cost. It's nowhere near a fixed cost. As a matter of fact, they're, you know, they say, well, rents are, you know, $200 higher than my mortgage would be. Well, but taxes go up on a mortgage, houses break. Um, I'm getting ready to spend about $20,000 fixing, repa replacing my air conditioning system, spent $3,500 fixing a staircase. Things break. And uh, you really have to, when you get, this is, and I hate to put it this way, but I'm going to do, I'm going to do it anyway. This is the price you have to pay for not doing what we all should have done when we were younger. And that was put a whole heck of a lot more away. 
You know, and that's really what it comes down to. But it is more of a lifestyle thing, too. It's really lifestyle. And for this guy, it sounds like it is lifestyle. He wants the backyard. He wants all of that. I would say you should rent him your condo because there's a park right there. He can do some gardening out in the Boy, park. Boy, you really, you really rub the, the, the raw wounds there, don't you? Sure, no problem. I'll just move him right He's, in. Do you still have oh, that condo? God, again, now you're scratching. <laughs> I mean, before it was kind of a rub. Now you're digging in with the claws. Thanks. Yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> No, that's not happening. No. You know, he could rent a part part of your backyard. Do. You need gardening oh, help. God. You, do I you ever. could, you know, the back the back forty there, the back forty just lays fallow. I would get uh, get him out there with a plow and a you know donkey. And, and the problem if you take a plow about twenty feet past my my property line, it disappear down into that swamp. It'd be about ten minutes, be down. So there you go. Good luck. Yeah, and 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 anything you grow out there, the bears going. That's to right. Get. Uh. Yeah, so real estate's not the no. be-all, end-all, and, and these days it's not. And in the Seattle area, Tom's right. Boy, $300,000? No, not going to happen. Barely a down payment on a exactly. lot of houses. Yeah. Barely on yeah. some of no, them, I, like yours. Yes. Anyway, we need not his condo. That'd be cheaper. Um, we, we, we take your questions, uh, and we get a lot that are written. So we're going to get one of those right now. And um, let's see. Uh, okay, here we go. This is yep. a good one. Short one, too. Uh, oh, it says, hey, Don. Oh, but that's because I did that's something okay. for him. It says, hey, that's Don. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate you responding to my question on opening account at Comenity. I was able... This is a gentleman, just to give you a backstory. Yeah. He sent a question in saying, you guys rec uh, suggested Comenity Bank was paying three quarters of one percent on a savings account. Okay. I tried to open the account. They rejected me. Oh, he that, reje I remember this. I remember this. Yeah. So, so he sent the question in, and I and I, I went live online and at the time and opened an account at Comenity and funded it with five thousand bucks and I'm making point seven five oh, on money that was man. at Bank of Get America about... earning point zero 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 one. At point seventy five, you're going to have a lot of money. I think I was earning about a penny a day. <laughs> no, a year. You're what? Gonna have a lot of money in about twenty. No, years I'm not going to have something. much money. Yeah. But yeah, he said though, um, I was able to open an account. I never knew this. He was able to open an account after unfreezing ah, his, his credit. credit was frozen. Interesting. So they wouldn't open an account because his credit was frozen. Which you do huh. see. Hey, Herb, if you're listening, that's a that who you know when you talk about freezing accounts, that's something you. Well, I'm really you're, hoping. You're I'm Herb. hoping. That Just we to don't let face you know, as much of that now with the spring and everything else. So, but we'll see. Well, it's getting warmer. Eventually, July. Okay, so it'll that be was nicer. just an update, not a question. Uh, I, but there's the, ah, the question okay. follows. Yes. I know. Uh, here it says, "I have an additional okay. question." I know the FDIC limit for insurance is 500000 for a joint account. Do you see any significant risk in carrying a balance higher than that? I have a significant amount I need to keep liquid, $1 million for a future home purchase. Just wondering if it would be best to spread it among bank accounts and get the ma or get the max at Comenity. Uh, I'm, this is a personal judgment issue, but if you go back to, I think, not long after the FDIC was set up in 34, whatever it was, yeah, it was in I the 30s. I believe yeah. I'm correct in saying this. I don't believe there is any bank in the United States that has not mm -mm. met, hasn't paid out. Oh, okay, you've never been unable to. That wasn't right, bailed some out. Some way or another it worked out. I mean, Washington Mutual is a prime example, right? 2008, all they did was change the name on the front to Chase. No one lost their money. Mm -hmm. There was that Indy Mac. I don't think even mm -hmm. there where the run was on the bank. I think everybody always got their money, correct? The one in Southern California, yes. Absolutely, so, yeah. and you're absolutely right. There is there never, I don't even think with a state no, I think, insured, I don't, I don't think it ever it's ever happened, happened, but I'm yeah. not 100% so, sure. Do I feel comfortable? Uh, but here's what would happen. The risks are incredibly low. The risks are far lower than uh, losing money in, for example, a corporate bond fund. That's more likely than this happening because banks, big banks, the big, big, big banks, have lots and lots of capital. They really do. And for them to be able to buy up the client accounts of another bank with a little bit of support and payment from the FDIC. You see, for the FDIC to help them acquire those assets is cheaper than the FDIC paying Correct. off those assets. So uh, it would take 
A, would take a Great Depression type event. Greater than Great It would take a Greater than Great Depression act, uh, event for, for, for you to lose out. However, however, that being said, I went to bank rate and I saw three or four banks recently that were paying about the same rate. So you could spread it around and it would... And the, the spreading of money... This is another reason why we don't need crypto. I opened that Comenity account and had it funded yeah, in 15 minutes. Yeah, it's very minutes. easy today. All of this being online can move the money around. And if you needed to get it from there to wherever for your purchase, again, pretty easy. So I guess for your own well-being, you could spread it around. The likelihood of something going wrong is pretty doggone small. And this is from a guy up in oh. my old neck of the woods, oh, north of Colorado go. Springs. He's up there on on the most infamous hill in Colorado of all hills. It's called Monument Hill. Monument Hill is uh, between Denver and Colorado Springs, and it's the high point oh. between Denver and Colorado Springs at about 8,000 feet, 7,000 feet, I think. I don't know exactly. But it is the place where the fronts pack snow in from either direction, coming up from the south or coming. And the Monument Hill can be incredibly Monumental frightening. Monumental drive of some kind? So is that hope you stayed warm. Okay. Monumental drive. He's in Monument, Colorado. Well, folks, friends, neighbors, countrymen, thanks for being a part of what oh, we do. Oh, before you go. Talking real money. If you're listening, what? watching, or paying attention, it's only like five Which is only a few from now, and you're going to be, you should be joining us. You should be, wherever you are in your life, you should you should take in retire me. Because, yes, when you're closer to retirement, there's more value. But you're going to get something out of it, no matter if you're 30, 60, 90, whatever it is. There's all kinds of information on investing, retirement income, housing, long-term care, social security, a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, you can skip you can skip yeah, the Medicare okay, so part. That's true. Because it'll probably be different by the time you get there. Even if you just there. listen to Herb. That's yeah, a good time to take a break. Even if you just listen to Herb about you know, protecting yourself from all the scams, when there are a lot. Join us, retiremeet.com. If, if you come virtually, it's free. If you join us in person, yeah, there's a charge because Don is making all those sandwiches and he wants to get his money back. So join us, retiremeet.com. That's Saturday, May 14th. It's going to be a great day. I only use the I, best The mayonnaise is to die for. I'll and, say that. And, and parking is free. <laughs> I like that. No. Tom's <laughs> paying on. for that. Tom's running a little shuttle to his <laughs> That's house. That's a great idea. I like that. In the backyard, <laughs> runs a shuttle bus down to Maidenbauer. All right. Thanks for being a part of this. Um, for those of you who have stuck around for the entire episode, we have a surprise for you. We didn't tell you this. This is only for people who stuck around till the end. Aren't you glad you stuck around? We have a special moment with Tom and Don where I was actually running the the video while we were talking before the show. So you can get some of our most embarrassing moments right after we close this thing out and play the disclaimer, okay? You got to wait past the disclaimer. And then this is like those uh, Marvel trailers where you sit through the titles. And if you sit through the titles, you get bonus stuff. You got to sit through the titles. Thanks for being there. I'm Don. That's Tom. Talking Real Money. We hope you realize that the information provided on Talking Real Money is for informational, educational, and hopefully enjoyable purposes only. Providing personalized financial planning or investing advice takes time. So please consult with a really good fee-only fiduciary investment, tax, or legal advisor. We know a good one. Investing must always involve risk. In other words, you can and probably will lose money at times. Also, as much as you want it, no one can accurately and consistently predict the future. So past performance doesn't tell you a darn thing about what the future will bring. Unlike many other programs that say something similar, Talking Real Money is not trying to get you to buy or sell any financial products or securities. Instead, the program is provided as a public service by Appella Capital, a fee-only registered investment advisor. Thanks for listening, and please visit TalkingRealMoney.com for more information and disclosures. As you keep the lawyers happy. It sounds like all these people are getting ripped off by crypto. Oh my God, I got to send you this thing I found through the New York Times. Holy crap. There's this two hour and 15 minute video. To I haven't finished it yet. Totally worth watching on how the crypto mania is very similar to what happened in 08. And then how NFTs are totally 100% a scam from the perspective of somebody who gets the technology. 
A scam, but in what way a scam? What total, mean? total. Like the 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 Beeple, sixty nine million dollar piece of art that sold right. through Christie's. It sold yep. to a guy who owns a crypto exchange oh, who used it so. to to boost his cryptocurrency. He made more money on the publicity he got for his cryptocurrency than he spent on the Beeple thing. He used it as a publicity stunt. Got it. Oh, by the way, speaking of things like that, make sure you read the Bloomberg piece on the explosion of online sports gambling and one guy's way, because they're all doing these offers like, you know, $500 first. Oh, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, blah, yeah, blah. yeah, 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 yeah. You, you use the the offer on the other side of the bet. You make the bet on something. Don McDonald's scoring 30 points in a game, 10 rebounds. Blah, blah. It's not going to happen. But then right. you take the other part, Oh, the you take part, the it's not going to happen. And you still make $73. He's doing all these bets like this. Oh, he's, he's, making, making, money on he's making less than he bet. Correct. But he's getting real it, money instead of the play money. And it's working out. He's got a system that's paying him so they don't oh, like you know, it that, but you know that won't last much longer no i was like uh that's like card counting in the casinos they'll yeah. be up to mm-hmm. that one pretty quick but um you'll you'd love the article it's in People. it was in the printed bloomberg so we should be recording we are recording this oh this yeah. is a pre-show uh, all right well this will actually make for a very interesting pre-show i'm going to watch that and the crypto thing because i'm going to do an episode on the crypto thing i'm going to use little snippets from his thing because he is brilliant Good stuff. You got well, send me the you. two hours. It's and, worth send me the two hours. It's worth sitting down for two hours and fifteen minutes. I watched an hour of it already, and it's really, really. I really, guess really, I'll really, do that really next good. week when I'm sunning myself in somewhat warm Arizona. <laughs> God, my wife, when she finds out, she's gonna just say what? I think I just looked, and one day yeah. it's supposed to be like sixty-seven degrees. What's the low? That's because it can get real on a 65 oh, degree yeah, day no, in Arizona. Oh, and let me ask you a question. So I'm still working on this uh, World Cup thing. I don't understand You're not. this. Yeah, I am still working, but it's when they keep saying not per person, they give me the charge not per person. I'm like, so is that? What does that mean? I don't know. What I was hoping is that you would two know. people? I don't. It's just very. Anyway. I, well, I don't know. You should. You know what you should do email them i do they, i've been emailing guy back and forth like so this is per, per no it's not per person well that, what does that mean this is for two people 17 people i'm bringing i'm bringing all of my friends and family <laughs> does it include everyone i know i'm gonna bring the entire u.s men's national soccer team okay they're yeah. gonna stay no, in they'll my be room. there anyway oh i see they don't but, need my help but 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 thankfully uh, you know our talking real money listeners might want to go to the world cup can they all go to oh you would have loved the the call yes you would have loved the call this morning because <laughs> I had a great call with this young couple from well i'm not going to say if this is recording but anyway and and, the, and at the end of it <laughs> He said, uh, you know what he, I said, I just went to, I just went to Orlando. He goes, yeah, yeah, I know you went to Orlando. I go, I wanted to see Don. It'd been a couple of years ago. He goes, no, you didn't. You went, you wanted to go see the world cup game. Wow. You're transparent. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah you got yeah, me you're there. Transparent. So, you didn't want to yeah. see me transparent. Right. Fair transparent. Fair you know what we're going to do with this? We're going to, we're going to pull a stacking Benjamins and we're going to make this bonus content at the there end. You if you sit through the whole yeah. episode, you get this stuff. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sitting through the whole episode. <laughs> Guess what? Now we're we didn't going even to know we were going to do this. Don's garage what? and Tom's whatever. So you're you know where you are. You are not in my garage. You're in my oh, did upstairs. You send me something? This was formerly. I know. Did you send me some no. big box or something from some? Yeah, that's your microphone. Thing? It's in some huge. How big? Okay, it's in like this. Three foot well, long it's box. a microphone and a boom arm. Ah, okay. Well, who do I use the boom? Bring okay. the boom down on. Lower the boom. No, okay. Sorry. Paul Merriman. Paul Merriman. Yeah. Paul got something for you. Come Paul on Merriman. over here. Gonna lower the boom. Bang. Okay, that's that. Yeah. Well, because right. you know he'll be there. You're, just, you're gonna. You guys are gonna be in studio, do you? We're going to. We're going to actually. Yeah, my pass still works. We just found out, so I get, actually get in. Until they move to the new building, and then they'll lock you out of the security system. Yeah, that's why I asked if the past. Don't thing. let that Tom been, guy back in. I don't in. think I've been there in a year and a half or something crazy. So no, anyway. no. Who, who goes anywhere? I know. Good point. So, all right. I'm ready. COVID's over. We still don't go anywhere. We're ready. Here yes, we go. Yes. That and by the way, us being ready means for those of you at the end of the show, this is kind of like a big loop. The show just loops back around. It never so, ends. This is, it goes around the moon, ends. comes back, keep watching. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start the show.
Ready?